Oh my gosh, y'all. So I had Cooper's party yesterday. For those of you who practice with me, hey Chris from Cape Cod. Um, you know that um, my son had uh, a geocaching party yesterday, which is super fun. It's like it's like a treasure hunt, but you use GPS on your phone to navigate. And I, I, it, they were everywhere. So I said, take video so that I can then judge you because there were winners and we had prizes and everything. I laughed so hard. I cannot even tell you. It was classic. At the end of class, if y'all want to see some of the videos, I'll show you some of the videos because it was so funny. And what came to mind, hey, Christy, um, is it reminded me about something that um, Dr. Joe Dispenza shared with us, which is the power of laughter and how it upregulates our genes. It upregulates our genes. And if you're kind of like, Laura, what does that mean, upregulates our genes? Go ahead and come on to the mat. Um, down regulation of our genes is when our genes get busted. Up regulation is when our genes get fixed. So pow um, laughter is extremely powerful for our health and our healing. And I was thinking about that because I've been laughing more lately than I typically do. So feel the feet root down into the earth. Palms shine forward. Soften those knees. Tuck the tail. Landing here in your Tadasana, mountain pose. Bring the chin back just a little bit, as if you're stacking your entire spinal column so that you can just draw energy up from Ladara, our root, all the way up to Sarasrara. Breathing here. And gently scan the body. Scan the body. How are you feeling in this moment without any judgment or wish for things to be different? Just accepting unconditionally with compassion and kindness this moment. Breathing. And then let's bring the hands together at the heart space. Take a nice big inhale and we'll own ourselves into this practice. So if you haven't done the breath of joy with me before, what you want to do is you want to inhale into all three lobes of the lungs. So it's an inhale, 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 and then we exhale. So it's in, sorry, yes, it's inhale, 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 and then we exhale down, okay? Inhale, 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 exhale down. Soften the knees as you fold forward, okay? Our, our spines aren't very warm, so... If you want to just really get into it and fall forward, great. Otherwise, you can have it be smaller. Inhale, 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 and then a smaller exhale. So it's up to you. Listen to your body. Okay? Sniff, sniff, sniff. Exhale. And the exhale is through the mouth. It's a nice big falling out. <sighs> okay? This is us enlivening our lungs, bringing fresh oxygen into our lungs, exhale, one more, and hang out, in our forward fold, a gentle sway back and forth. Ooh, my lumbar spine is still tight, y'all. I told you I tweaked it yesterday. And I can still feel it. Head hangs heavy. <sighs> and just a gentle sway back and forth. Opening up the back body. Knees are soft. And... I've really been focused lately on a continued invitation 
for you to practice yoga from the inside out. And what that means is I invite you to let go of what the pose looks like and really plug into how the pose feels for you. So you're really connecting to the, you know, the way that this pose is serving you. Gently walk those hands up the legs as you keep the tailbone tucked, ragdoll pose, and come on up. The whole reason that we do asana, plugging the feet into the mat, inhale those arms out and up, reach up, is to help remove energetic blocks. Exhale. They're called granti. We've been studying the granti in this series. Brahma granti is the one that lives at Muladhara, the root. Inhale, straight up overhead. Exhale, arch the other way. Vishnu granti lives at the heart. And Rudra granti lives at the third eye. Stretch it up, reach it up, look overhead if that's comfortable with the neck and the lower back. And then exhale, let's dive down. So these energetic blocks effectively stop our energy flowing through our subtle anatomy, our chakra, our energetic system. And that's what yoga is here to help with, it's to help dissolve those blocks. So if you're not practicing yoga from the inside out, you're not going to be effective in addressing those blocks. Inhale, arch up, halfway, flat back. And that's why we've really been focused on boosting our body awareness and our intuitive intelligence. Exhale it down. Again, inhale, arch up, halfway, flat back. Feel yourself really pouring energy down the top, out the top of the head. We're not cranking the neck. We're looking at the mat right underneath the face or the floor right underneath the face. And then exhale it down. And inhale those arms all the way up. Reach up, lift up. Come up onto the balls of the feet if that feels good. Really feel yourself stretching up as you root down. Good focus gaze, a little bit of balance here. And then settle those heels down. Hands come to the heart space. And inhale those arms out and up, a beautiful Surya Namaskar breath. Sun salute breath. Exhale, come on down, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, half lift. And step it back, down dog. First down dog. So walk your dog out. Settle one heel down and then the other. Again, doing yoga from the inside out. So at any time, if you find something juicy and I move on and you're like, nope, I'm not ready yet, well, then you do what speaks to you, what speaks to your body. Listen, listen to what the body is asking for. Drop those knees down, hands under shoulders. Inhale, Bittalasana, cow. And exhale, arch, marjoriyasana, cat. And while you're here in your cat, bring the right ear towards the right shoulder. Feel how that stretches out the scalenes on the left, the muscles that run down the side of the neck. And then inhale, lift, Bittalasana. And exhale, arch. And then the left ear comes towards the shoulder while you're still arching in your Marjoriyasana. And inhale, lift. Curl those toes under. Feel the feet opening up. Open the soles of the feet as you lift the tailbone. Head comes up, stretching out the soles of the feet. And then lift the hips, exhaling. 
Step it back, down dog. Breathe in here. And then come forward and have the knees float. Hands are under the shoulders. Knees are floating. Feel, so you're like an inch or two off of the earth. And feel the strength in the arms. Feel the strength in the body. Engage the core. And then exhale. Lift the tailbone up. <sighs> right? Another breath. Float that right leg back and up. If you like three-legged dog, roll the foot on the ankle. If you don't like three-legged dog, just stay in down dog. And then step that right foot forward. For some of you who might have like tweaky wrists or whatever, you know, three-legged dog might put too much pressure on the wrists and that's fine. Don't do it. You're the pilot. I'm just the co-pilot here. So coming into your Vera One, right knee is right over the ankle. And inhale those arms up, reach up, breathe in here. In your Vera One. Beautiful, open heart. So yesterday we talked about being a victim. How some of us, many of us, most of us, are can be habitually in this play this role of victim. Step off onto the right foot. And if you think of a victim as someone who is like physically abused or whatever, that's not what we're talking about. We're coming down into your Garudasana. So the left knee is on top. Bend into the right leg. The toes can come down. The left toes can come down if you're struggling with your own balance. Take your Garudasana Ludra, which is when we hook the thumbs, okay? Fingers are like wings. This is eagle pose. Another breath. And then step it back. Vira one. Breathe in here. And your Garudasana one. Open the heart. Another breath. Step off onto that right foot. And we're going to come into balancing half moon, which means our hand goes in front of our foot and off about 12 inches in front of the foot and off to the side. Now, if you have a block, it can be really helpful to put your hand on a block, okay, as you balance here. Maybe the hand comes down onto the earth. Maybe you balance. Okay. Breathing. Another breath. Step it back. Vera one. Open the heart. And yesterday I talked a lot about the, the victim mentality of, you know, doing things that we don't necessarily want to do, but we feel like we have to do it. All the shoulds that layer on ourselves. And then we feel resentful, we feel grumpy. You know, and that was really our focus. Of, um, of being a victim. Another breath. And then straighten that leg and hands come down into your pyramid. So long edges of the feet parallel to long edges of the mat. Soften the knee. Okay, feet are hip width apart. And again, if you have blocks, you can put your hands on your blocks. Okay, you can put your hands on your hips, on your thigh, on your shin. Knee down to the mat. And glide the right hip back, square the left hip forward. And fold over the leg. Fold over the leg. You know, and there are a variety of other ways that we can play the role of the victim. You know, I had um, a very, very good friend. We've um, unfortunately distanced ourselves because I had such a hard time witnessing the challenges that she carried into her life. And she would, you know, she had a variety of physical ailments. And I would witness her knowing, you know, she knew that these are my challenges, my physical challenges. Inhale up. And I would witness her still not take care of herself, not eat well. You know, and and therefore remain on that circle of you know um, struggling physically, which was very very hard to watch. It was very hard to witness. But you know, we'll often 
you know, do these kinds of things because it gives us, you know, the ability to check out possibly or have something that says, well, I can't do that because of my, you know, physical limitations. I can't do that because I'm too busy. So it effectively creates our barrier or our script, an excuse. Hands come down, either side of the foot. So this is just an opportunity for us to shine a light on the way that maybe we're showing up in life. Breathe here in your down dog. And if you'd like, come into child's pose. Thinking about the ways that maybe you have habits that don't serve you. And seeing those with kindness and compassion. Right? I certainly have my own scripts that I follow. Another breath. And glide forward into plank if you want to come through vinyasa. Beautiful, strong energy here in our plank. Dandasana. And then come on down, Ashtang Pranam. Eight-pointed pose, but up in the air. Or you can take Chaturanga if you're more of a Chaturanga person. I'm not so much into Chaturanga. Hands underneath the shoulders, Bhujangasana. Cobra pose. Really breathe into the back body. Breathe into the back waist. And maybe just kind of gently draw an infinity sign with your nose. Going back and forth here in your cobra, your baby cobra. And then exhale the nose down. And inhale the nose up. Hi, Kalima. Exhale the nose down. And inhale, lift into the back body, feeling the strength. This is so good for us, so good for our kidneys and our adrenals, which live just above the belt line in the back body. Exhale it down. Plug those hands into the earth. Come on back into your Anahatasana. Puppy dog stretch. Open the heart. Press the hands into the earth, breathing into the underarms. And then curl the toes, lift the hips, down dog. So, Agya, Agya Chakra, this is the chakra that we're focusing on today. Rolling the head is the third eye. And this is the master chakra where everything becomes unified. Everything becomes unified. Another breath. And float that left leg back and up. Stretch it up. If you're in down, if you're in child's pose resting, I invite you to join us in down dog. Taking your three-legged dog if you like it. Left leg is up. Stepping that left foot forward. So with Agya, inhale, lift. The master chakra. This is the master chakra. The one that magnifies and harmonizes all other chakras when we have it activated. And Rudra, Rudra Granti, that, that knot, the energetic knot, the psychic knot, breathing here in your Vera one. And then we step off onto that left foot, going into Garudasana. Knees on top, taking Garudasana Mudra, where we hook the thumbs, sit the hips down. Use the toes to catch your balance if you lose it. I just did for a second. Breathe into the strength of the legs. Another breath. And step it back, Vera One. So in order to really activate, to open the third eye, we need to let go of playing the role of the victim. We need to step into our role of being a leader of our own life. Another breath. Step off onto that left foot. 
coming into our Ardha Chandrasana. Remember that we can put our hand on a block if you have a block. Okay, or you can drop it down onto the earth. Pouring energy down that right leg, out the heel. Top arm reaches up, right arm reaches up. Breathing here. Another breath. Then that leg, step it back. Vera one. Open the heart, breathe. And then straighten the legs, feet hip width apart. Long edges of the feet parallel to long edges of the mat. We're going into pyramid. Soften the front knee so you don't hyperextend the knee. Keep those hips square. Square the right hip forward, left hip back. And then come on down into your pyramid. This is like we're walking on a, like a hieroglyphic. Let the head hang heavy. So when we really let go of being the victim, we step into our leadership, you know, life becomes less of a waiting room. We start to connect deeply with our own intuitive intelligence. We listen to our own voice. We know what is right for us. Glide the left hip back, square the right hip forward. Breathing here in our pyramid. Head hangs heavy. Another breath. And this is our swadhyaya, right? This is our self-inquiry, our self-study. Inhale that. And if, you know, as you're asking yourself these questions about, well, do I play the role of the victim? Inhale, lift. If you don't know, if it, if it feels a little bit confusing or opaque, that's okay. Hands either side of the foot. What I invite you to do, step the foot back, is just witness how you go through the day. Tailbone lifts, head hangs heavy. Rolling the head on the neck. Witness how you go through the day, and any time you have kind of a clench, you know, I invite you to pay attention to where it is. Okay, I told a story a, a week or so ago, and if you'd like, come into child's pose to rest, or rest in down dog, or you can come through vinyasa with me, coming into plank and breathing. I told you a, um, a brush that I had. Um, where I got some criticism, and it landed right in my throat. I had a huge knot in my throat. It felt like I had swallowed something, and it had gotten lodged in my throat. So pay attention to where it lands in your body, because that body intelligence, sometimes, even if the mind is kind of closed down, the body will respond, where you're like, this is not right for me. Come on down, Ashtanga or Chaturanga. Lift it up. A little bit more height to your bhujangasana, breathing into the back bend. Mm, exhale down. Inhale, lift. Exhale down. Inhale, lift. Squeezing out the back body giving the adrenals and the kidneys a nice big hug, sending them love. And then come on to the knees, and Anapatasana. Stretch it out, press the palms. Another breath. And then reach back, curl those toes under, catch the little pinky toe so that the pads of the toe are on the earth, not the nail, and lightly grip the soles of the feet, and lift into your rabbit. I just realized I don't know the Sanskrit for this pose. And I do it quite a bit. Holding onto the feet. Breathe into the back part. Breathe into the shoulders. This is such a good one to open areas that are often tight. We're super, super, super light on the top of the head. Virtually no pressure on the top of the head. Taking care of our necks, our cervical spine. Breathe, and then come on back. 
and grab your block or blocks as you need them. And from here, coming into your mala, mala, malasana. <laughs> so malasana is your squat. So you might be like, okay, so when you're squatting, your toes are out, your heels are in, and you're coming down, okay? And your squat might be up here, and you can put your hands on your knees. Take care of those knees, okay? Breathing here. If you can come down, come on down into your malasana. Bring the, and try as best you can to get the heels down. Bring the elbows in towards the knees and stretch it out. And if you feel like you're constantly at risk of falling over, just put a block underneath your booty. You might be like, one block? Really? <laughs> I need like five. Well, grab another block. Or come into your like suspended squat. And breathe here into the hips. Hands at the heart space, stretching it out. Another breath. <sighs> right? Another breath. And then rock forward. Come off your block if you were on one. Come on to hands and knees. Hands underneath the shoulders. And curl the toes. Lift the hips. Down dog. <sighs> Tailbone rises up in the head. Hangs heavy. Roll that on the neck. So when our Agya Chakra, or Ajna Chakra, depending on how you prefer pronouncing it. Step that right leg forward. Set the back foot. Inhale, lift into your Vira One. Breathing. And then step off onto that right foot, grounding down the right leg. Bring the left knee in towards the chest. Again, breathing into the hips. Shoulders down the back. Nice long spine. And then bring the, the heel into the glutes. Drop that right knee, left knee down. Good focus gaze. I almost lost it there, y'all. So remember, if you fall out of it, it's all good. Just come back into it. Right arm stretches up, and this might be enough for you. This is prep for King Dancer, a little tiny micro bend in the right knee. If you want to come into King Dancer, you turn your palm so that the thumb is out. Hold on to the inner sole of the foot, the arch of the foot, I should describe it as, and then push the foot into the hand. Hold on to the foot. Drop the left hip down, and breathe here. Another breath, and release, step it back, here on one, knees over ankles, shoulders down the back, spin the pinkies towards each other, broadening the back heart, <sighs> right, so good, step off onto the right foot, both hands come down, standing split, And then float that left foot down. Bring the ankles together, the toes together. My toes kind of go whee, so my toes really don't come together. <laughs> so sit down into your utkatasana. Really allowing the, get heavy in the heels, light in the toes. Arms reach up. Another breath, and then straighten up, reach up, lift up, open the heart, and widen the feet, come on down. My brother's calling me, head hangs heavy, inhale, arch up halfway, flat back, exhale, release, step it back, down dog, walk your dog out, settling one heel down and then the other. Head hangs heavy. Roll the head on the neck. Breathing here. And then float that left leg back and up. Stretch it up. Reach it up. 
knowing that you're going into Bureau 1. Set your foot forward. Set your feet. And lift it up. Hips are square towards the front of the mat. Open up into your view of Rasana 1. Mm. Breathing. Another breath. Step off onto that left foot, hugging the right knee in towards the chest. Shoulders down the back. Good focus gaze. Breathing into that right hip. And then bring the sole of the foot into the glute. Breathing into the quadriceps, the thigh, the front of the right thigh on the right leg. Another breath. And then the left arm reaches up. Turn the hand so that you hold on to the inside of the, the arch of the foot and come into your king dancer on this side. Feeling yourself pushing the foot into the hand, lifting up. What? I lost it. Gosh darn it. And then as you're ready, step it back. Lifting up. Vera one. And stepping off, coming into your standing split. Floating that leg up. Another breath. Step it back. Inhale up. Vibra in a one. And exhale, hands either side of the foot. Come on down. Walk your dog out. Tailbone rises up and head hangs heavy. Rolling the head on the neck. Thinking about you unifying, unifying yourself so that you're more and more plugged in. You know, and if you're in a place where gliding forward plank or coming down into child's pose, we're all going to meet in child's pose in a moment. Breathing here in your plank. You know, I, I chatted briefly about if you're in a place where you're just not really sure, like, okay, you know, listen to the body. You know, the body will tell you if things are out of alignment. And just witness, you know, just take your time. Take your time to pay attention to how things land, especially if you habitually do things which make you kind of riled up and grumpy. Another breath. Come on down. Lifting up. Cobra pose, Bhujangasana. Keeping those elbows just a little bit bent if you're coming up into the height of your cobra. Breathe into the throat. And then come on down. Onto the belly. And then press into the hands. Widen the knees. Touch the toes. Come on back into your child's pose. Palms up. And wherever you are in child's pose, please make sure that you've got pressure on the third eye. So if you're floating here, you know, if you have a hard time getting your, your um, head down to the, the mat, you can put your blocks here. You can turn your blocks a whole bunch of different ways. Okay? And if you're like, Laura, I don't have blocks, you can stack your fists. Okay? Maybe that gives you enough height. Because you really want to melt down onto your agya, agya chakra. Roll the eyes up and in, in Sambhavi Mudra. This is very stimulating to the pineal and the pituitary glands. <sighs> Another breath. And then release down. And come on up. And come to an easy seat. We're going to do um, Mula Bandha. So if you have a block, I invite you to sit on it or a blanket. And we're going to take Varasana, if this is okay, on your knees. So with Varasana, hero pose, our knees are together. We take our block and we put it between the shins. So that when you sit down, you kind of have your, your booty 
and your other bits on the block, because this really helps, especially if you're um, not all that familiar with Mula Banda. So Mula Banda isn't um, great if, um, Mula Banda isn't as vigorous as Uddiyana Banda. So Mula Banda, um, if you have any disc issues, I wouldn't recommend Mula Banda um, if you're pregnant or if you're on the first two days of your cycle. You can just sit here and breathe. We want to stack all of the chakras, okay? So that we're really shining up the top of the, um, the head. The hands can be on the, the thighs. And really feel yourself rooting down the root, okay? Um, Muladhara chakra. The color is red, all right? So the root lives right in the, um, the perineum, which is that sling of tissue between the anus and the genitals. All right, that's really where the root lives. So think about squeezing the, the hip points in. You can even draw the hip points in, like press them in. And another thing I've heard if you've um, struggled with Mula Bandha, which is a pretty cool um, visualization, is visualize yourself levitating off the mat. How cool is that? So what we do with Mula Bandha is it's kind of like a Kegel. You really want to, as, as you can, you want to connect to that perineal sling and you're lifting that up. So we'd have a nice big inhale, relax the belly, belly is soft. And then as we exhale, we draw up. And what this does is it engages the root and it lifts energy up. Because what we want to do in order to activate Agya, we need to draw energy up to the third eye. And Mula Bandha helps with that. And then we inhale and we release. Belly is soft. And then we exhale and we draw and we lift up. And you can envision as if you have this huge pool of red energy. Okay? Muladhara energy. Earth energy. And then as we engage Mula Bandha, we lift that energy up so it starts lighting up the chakras, drawing energy up. And then inhaling, we release. So let's do three more rounds of this. We inhale and we release. And then as we exhale, we draw up, squeezing really connecting and by sitting on the block if you have a block if you don't have a block you can also sit on the heels it helps just feel more fully into the root area so you can really start teasing out you know the the perineum so we're really plugging in there to lift that sling of tissue up as if you're levitating up off the mat and we inhale last one Exhaling, draw up and in, draw that energy up, pulling it up, all the way up, so it goes all the way up to Agya, the element is consciousness, or beyond the five senses, the color is indigo, and then release, and come on off the block, and come on to the back. Hugging the knees into the chest. Oh, snap, crackle, pop. Rolling on the back body. Oh, swim those knees around. Oh, right? Roll the feet on the ankles. Hug those knees in. Stretching out the lumbar spine. And then soles of the feet onto the earth and just windshield wiper those knees back and forth. And drop them down to the right as you look to the left. Inhale them up. Exhale down. Other way. Inhale it up. Closing the eyes, rolling the eyes up and in. Inhale lift. 
soles of the feet up close to the hips, and let's lift up and down into our um, half bridge. So we inhale, and the hips are relaxed on the earth, and then we exhale, and we lift the hips up. Feel yourself plugging evenly into the heels. If you're like me, you might have a slacker leg. My left leg is so lazy, oh my gosh. It'll let the right leg do all the work. So do your best to really connect into the feet and have 50% of the effort come from the right and 50% of the effort come from the left. And I didn't even realize it for a really long time that, you know, and it's, it's normal, right? We have a dominant side, we have a stronger side. But here, let's just really exhale and make sure we're using both legs as evenly as we can. And inhale it down. Exhale. Inhale. Eyes are closed, rolled up and in, and continuing to ask yourself, you know, what is my truth? Vishuddha, our throat chakra, is where truth and wisdom lies. But Agya, Agya is our intuitive intelligence, right? Welcoming in that, that deeper sense of knowing and lift it up and come on up into full bridge, rolling the shoulders together if this works for you, clasping the hands, lift the hips up, pouring energy. Do your best to not have the knees splay open. They'll naturally want to splay open, kind of into a V. Try to keep them more like um, parallel to each other. We've got a kitty cat who's running around. Oh, there she goes. Breathing into the strength of the legs. And then release enough that come on down. And if you happen to have blocks, I invite you to grab your blocks. And when we come into supported bridge, have the block be the length, the lowest setting, and the length of it go underneath the um, sacrum. So it's the widest, um, I keep using setting, like it's a phone or something. So that effectively spans as much of the pelvis as it can. Okay, we're not turning it on its narrow edge. And we breathe here. And if you're like me, I'm pretty tall. So I bring both blocks. And the reason that we um, use the blocks, the width of the blocks, is this is better for the health of our sacroiliac joints. Now, if you don't have blocks, you can either lift in and out of um, bridge, or you can come on down and you can hug the knees into the chest. You can do something else. Listen to the body. What do you want to do here? If you're in supported bridge, I invite you to really bring the chin down into the chest, breathing into Vishuddha lighting it up, connecting with your truth and your wisdom, knowing that that will fuel your intuitive intelligence, which lives in Agya. The color of Vishuddha, the throat, is turquoise. The sound, the seed sound, is hum. So you might want to hum here if it feels good. Hum, hum. Because with the chin down towards the chest, it can get really resonant. Hum, 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 hum. Another breath or two. And if you want to play here in the last few breaths with maybe bringing one leg up. And then the other leg up. And then maybe you want to balance and lift up. Taking care of the body, listening to the body. If you're on your cycle, I don't recommend bringing the legs up. Breathing here. 
another breath. And then come on down. Pour energy into the feet. Lift up off of the block or blocks. And roll it down nice and slow. Nice and slow. Allow the spine to normalize for a breath or two. And then bring the knees into the chest and just gently stretch it out. Stretch out the lumbar spine. Mm, it feels good. And now we're going down into Shavasana. So if there's one last pose, one last movement, one last stretch, it doesn't have to be yoga. Everything is yoga. It doesn't have to be what you typically think of as a yoga posture, though. Go ahead and do that now. And then I invite you to melt down into your Shavasana. And your Shavasana, this is classic Shavasana, on the back, palms up, feet flop open. But if your Shavasana looks like something else, so that you can deeply rest and relax, close the eyes and listen. Listen to the body. Listen to what the body wants. Really going inside. And then just allow yourself to drop down into silence. Shunya. Today's poem from Dana. A life of truth walks the edge between ease and effort. There's nothing you must do to win approval. No list of saintly acts to tick off one by one. No required deprivations. Say yes to life. And you are blessed with countless opportunities to choose wholeness over fragmentation. You need but knock for doors to open wide. Ask, and you are filled with a presence so vast that all the words in your personal lexicon amount to nothing in its silence. Stop seeking long enough to receive the spirit that's within you now. Just be your truest self, and the voice you've longed to hear will speak through you. Release your grip on limitation, and possibilities roll out like endless ocean waves. All you have to do is kick off your shoes and run barefoot in the sand. Say yes to life and you are blessed with countless opportunities to choose wholeness over fragmentation. 
and that's at the heart of Agya Chakra. Unifying ourselves into our deepest truth. Letting go of our victim mentality. Choosing to lead our lives in a way that serves us best. Breathing here. And from the inside out, start to bring movement into the body. Wiggling fingers and toes. Rolling the head on the neck. Listen to the body. How does the body want to move right now? remain closed. And then carefully rolling over onto the right side and cradle the heart and gently rock it out. Sending yourself so much love. Seeing yourself just as you are and recognizing that you are wholly perfect, just as you are. There's no need to tick off saintly acts. There's no need to earn your worth. You are worthy just as you are. And then carefully press yourself up into an easy seat, bringing the hands together Lightly rub the hands, building up with just a little bit of heat, a little bit of friction in the hands, and then float the palms apart and see if you can feel that ball of energy. It's called wuji in Chinese, which I love that word. I'm joking, they said we're going to name our next pet Wuji. And then holding this energy, scoop this energy up and gently face the palms, face the, the hands so that they face in towards the eye, overlapping the fingers at Agya, at the third eye, and shine that healing energy in towards the third eye. The color is indigo. Breathe in. Lighting up the third eye. Pouring this healing energy. Seeing yourself in your mind's eye. Whole. Kind, compassionate. Just as you are. And then let's gently bring the palms together, base of the thumbs, meet at the third eye. Inhale it up. Mom. 